To build an impressive back, you'll need to focus primarily on heavy horizontal and vertical pulling movements, but that's not all. We can also use the latest in exercise science to our advantage. But first, let's talk a bit about the anatomy of the back and what functions the back muscles are responsible for. The back's main muscle groups from an aesthetic standpoint are the lats, rhomboids, and traps, so we'll be placing our focus on those. That said, most of the exercises we'll touch on in this video will also hit every other muscle in the mid and upper back as well as the spinal erectors. The lats. The lats help to build the V taper, which gives you the appearance of a smaller waist due to adding width to your frame. There's nothing better than a Cobra style back resembling that of a comic book superhero. The lat's primary functions are shoulder extension or bringing the arm behind the body as well as shoulder adduction or bringing the arms down to your sides. The lats are also responsible for internal rotation of the shoulder as well as lateral flexion of the spine. The rhomboids. The rhomboids act to give a denser, thicker appearance to your back. They sit in between the shoulder blades and spine and are split into two, the rhomboid major and the rhomboid minor. Both muscles are responsible for scapular retraction or pulling your shoulder blades back and a small bit of scapular depression. The traps. Next up, we have the traps, which are split into an upper, middle, and lower portion. The upper fibers originate from the back of the skull and are mainly responsible for scapular elevation. The middle fibers are more involved in retracting the scapula while the lower fibers act to depress the scapula. Now that we understand what muscles are involved and more importantly what functions they're responsible for, let's delve into another important factor, training frequency. When it comes to how often you should train your back, the most recent available research would suggest that overall training volume supersedes training frequency. In other words, it's not about how often you train your back, but how much total work you do. Keep in mind, however, that increased frequency is a great way to increase total volume. We also need to think about the fiber composition of the back musculature. Research seems to show that the lats and traps are made up of a pretty even balance of slow and fast twitch fibers, making it a good idea to train with both heavier and lighter loads. Another point worth noting before we jump into the actual back workout pertains to muscle activation. There seems to be some preliminary evidence that suggests that lat activation is increased in pulling movements when you perform some brief pre-activation drills or make use of tactile stimulation. Simply performing some light single arm rows while touching the working muscle will lead to an overall increase in lat activation. Greater muscle activation, in theory, should lead to a greater stimulus and therefore more muscle growth. Now that we understand the theory behind my approach to back training, let's jump into the perfect back workout routine for size and strength. Day 1. Back. Strength. Deadlift, 3 sets, 5 reps. Although most experts would classify the deadlift as a lower body dominant movement, it's no secret that it also happens to be the best overall back builder. This is because the deadlift will allow you to place the most amount of load through the back musculature. Although the spinal erectors and rhomboids will contract isometrically during the movement, the lats actually contract concentrically. Your legs may initiate the lift, but if you can't maintain high levels of stability through your posterior chain, mainly your upper back, the weight won't move more than a few inches off of the floor. To produce the most amount of force as safely as possible, what we want to do is maximize stability in our setup. This can be done by keeping tension on the hamstrings and erectors. Start by lowering the hips and engaging the lats. A good cue for better lat engagement would be to think about bending the bar around your shins. From there, you'll pull the slack out of the bar by leaning back slightly. 
Now initiate the pull by driving your feet into the floor until the bar is at knee height and finally pushing your hips through to finish the lift. On the eccentric, make sure to keep your core tight and lower the weight under control. To increase back activation even further, imagine squeezing a pencil between your shoulder blades throughout the lift. Weighted pull-ups, three sets, six to eight reps. To perform this movement, start from a dead hang using a dip belt to add resistance. If you don't have access to a belt, you can simply place a dumbbell between your legs or feet, although this will get more difficult as you progress. Start by retracting your scapula and then pulling with your elbows, bringing your clavicle towards the bar, and be sure to fully extend the elbows at the bottom of the rep. If you are unable to perform this exercise for the prescribed volume with added resistance, start with just your body weight and work your way up from there. If you're unable to complete 6 to 8 body weight pull-ups with strict form, start with assisted pull-ups and build your strength from there. This can be done with an assisted pull-up machine, a friend, or pull-up assistance bands. Chest Supported Row 3 sets, 8 to 10 reps a chest supported row not only forces you to remain strict by eliminating the ability to cheat or use momentum, but also leads to less stress being put through your lower back, making it a great way to finish off your back workout. As this exercise forces you into a fixed position, it may also limit your ability to load, which is why I recommend using slow eccentrics. Not only will this improve the mind-muscle connection, but evidence suggests varying rep tempos may lead to greater muscle growth. Day 2 Back Hypertrophy Penlay Row 3 sets, 8 to 10 reps the aim here is to get your torso as close to parallel as possible before initiating the pull. If you lack the hamstring mobility to do so, try placing the barbell on some blocks and performing dead stop rows instead. A few things you want to avoid when performing this exercise are bouncing the bar off of the floor or not starting from a dead stop position, failing to remain tight and flaring your elbows which will result in pulling too high making the exercise harder to load as this will shift your center of gravity. Lat pull down, 3 sets, 8 to 10 reps. Whenever we're pulling a weight down from over our head, the lats become the primary target. Vertical pulling is, by far, the most efficient way to build massive wings. This is mainly due to their functions, extension and adduction of the shoulder. A study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research compared different grips on the lat pulldown. A V-bar with hands in a neutral position, an underhand pulldown similar to a chin-up, an overhand pulldown similar to a pull-up, and an overhand behind the back pulldown. They found that the pronated in front of the body variation led to the highest activation in the lats. When it comes to grip width, the research seems to support the use of a medium grip over both a narrow or wider grip due to more activation on the eccentric portion of the exercise. Seated row, 3 sets, 8 to 10 reps. This horizontal pulling variation is a great way to effectively target the lats, rhomboids, and both mid and upper traps. The main thing to avoid with this lift is using excessive momentum. Control each rep throughout the entirety of the exercise to ensure we're maximizing each set. At the end of each rep, aim to bring your shoulder blades as close together as possible as this will result in a peak contraction of the rhomboids and traps. Snatch Grip Barbell Shrug 3 sets, 8 to 10 reps Because the main function of the upper traps is shoulder elevation, it's no surprise that we're including a shrug in our workout. That said, research has proven that having your arms in a degree of abduction rather than directly at your sides leads to a greater degree of upper trap activation. This is why I recommend a snatch grip barbell shrug where you're leaning slightly forward. Although the exercise is quite simple to perform, there are a few mistakes you should avoid when performing a barbell shrug. 
for starters, gripping the bar at shoulder width as you would on a traditional shrug while standing completely upright is going to limit the amount of upper trap activation. Another classic mistake is failing to control the weight on the eccentric portion of the lift. Sure, this may allow you to lift a bit more weight, but you're far better off using a weight you can handle in order to maximize muscle growth while reducing the risk of injury. To ensure you're maximizing your results with this movement, make sure you're gripping the bar at a width where it sits right at the top of the pubic bone when standing upright. Lean your torso slightly forward and shrug the bar up and inward as if you're trying to touch your shoulders to your ears. Control the weight on the way down and initiate the rep once your arms are completely straight and the traps are fully lengthened. So there you have it, a science-based workout routine that provides enough total volume for the entire back while also focusing on strength. Remember, the key to muscle growth with any program is progression. As long as you're gradually getting stronger or doing more work, you'll continue to grow. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. Is there a muscle group you want a science-based workout routine for? Let me know in the comments section below and I'll make a video like this one. Also, if your training and nutrition are in order and you're looking for an extra edge, be sure to check out my science-based supplement line. Each product was created using scientifically proven ingredients, all clinically dosed and guaranteed to produce results. If you want to check those out, head over to musclemonsters.com forward slash supplements or click the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.